Welcome to In 5 Minutes. The agenda of this clip is to identify the delay time mathematically. Here in this clip, we'll first understand the basic of how would we solve this problem mathematically and then extend our understanding to go and find out the actual mathematical expression. Okay, let's get started here. Here on your screen, I have shown you a CMOS inverter with the input output and the current flowing through PMOS and MOS because we are studying delay or dynamic characteristics or switching characteristics as a capacitor at the output which I have shown by CL and the current is flowing through the capacitor which is nothing but IC. In very simple language if we write or if we apply KCL here we know that it's nothing but current entering equal to current leaving. So that would be nothing but IC plus IDN is equal to IDP which means that IC equal to IDP minus IDN. Now what is the value of IC? We know that it's an output current flowing across the capacitor CL. It's nothing but given by C dV by dt which in our case it's nothing but CL dV out by dt. Correct? Now we'll consider one case and we'll go ahead and identify what is going to happen in that case. Let's assume initially that the rising input case for our CMOS inverter. So considering the rising input case for our CMOS inverter, so it means that my input was zero first and then it began to rise. Now this is with the rise and fall time and the step one would be like this where my input has begun to rise from here, correct? If that's the case, initially when my input was zero, can I say that my output was high or VOH? So that's correct. So initially, output was VOH. When the input voltage switches from low to high, low means VOL to VOH, correct? What do we know? When the input voltage switches from low to high, we know that my NMOS transistor will turn on because it turns on when the logic high is applied at its input and it starts to discharge this load capacitor or in simple words, my PMOS transistor is turned off and my IDP is equal to zero. So if I had put that here in equation one, what I get is nothing but IC equal to minus IDN for this case, where IC itself is nothing but CL dV out by dt, correct? Equal to minus IDN. Let's call this as equation two, and this will be very important in our analysis. This e equation clearly tells us if somehow I can identify the value of IDN then my issue is somewhat sorted because I'll be able to predict my propagation delay which we'll see very shortly. Now as we assume that our input was rising from 0 towards VOH or VOL towards VOH remember this was VOL from VOL towards VOH that means my output would be falling from high to low so the analysis which we are going to do is propagation delay high to low analysis. Remember that. With that basics, let's go ahead now. Here on your screen, I have drawn some sketches. Don't get intimidated. It's a very simple thing. Here we saw that we need to find the equation of ID. In order to find the equation of ID for an NMOS, we need to know whether the NMOS is operating in the linear region or in the saturation region. For that, I have just plotted my graph of my input and output and from there on I will be able to predict the value of current. So this is nothing but initially my input equal to 0 or VOL then it rises up to VOH at the same time when my input is VOL my output is VOH when input rises the output starts falling and this was our definition of PHL we 50% of the falling output transition to VOL technically I want to find the time difference between T1 and T0. It's nothing but propagation delay high to low is T1 minus T0. What I'm going to do is I'm going to find the region of operation of my current from T0 to T1 dash and T1 dash to T1. Once I find the equation of the current or the region of operation of my NMOS transistor in this regions, I have a formula in which I can substitute and accordingly find the value of the propagation delay by integration. Let's quickly go ahead and see. But before we do that, we need to find the region of operations. So here is a very interesting concept. Please stay focused. 
Here I have drawn my NMOS, which we have already understood. Here I have put the region of operation for my NMOS and cutoff, linear and saturation. From the circuit, I can easily say that VGS is nothing but V in because this is gate and source for NMOS. I beg your pardon, this is my MOS inverter, CMOS inverter. In that, we are going to focus on NMOS because the NMOS transistor is on. So VGS for NMOS is V in, VDS for NMOS is V out, conditions for cutoff, linear and saturation. Now let's focus on the output waveform. We are currently concerned with T0 and T1 dash time. So let's see what our output is going to be in that time zone. My output is VOH and my output is VOH and VOH minus VTN. Now a question might arise, how did I plot T1 dash here? Very, very simple, pay attention. Okay, so we are more concerned with how did we get this T1 dash? Okay, let's quickly understand from the graph. Initially, my output was VOH. At that point of time, my input was VOL. Then suddenly at time equal to T0, my input went to VOH. And we know that the output cannot change instantaneously. It takes some time. So output started to fall down gradually. So we want to identify the region of operation of my NMOS when all these events are happening. We just said that input went from VOL to VOH. Output initially was equal to VOH and it was beginning to go down to a lower value. Output for an NMOS is nothing but VDS. Input for an NMOS is nothing but VGS. That's what's mentioned on the right side of your screen. If output was VOH, which is nothing but nearly equal to VDD, we can easily say that because my NMOS transistor is turned on, right? Input has gone to VOH, so my NMOS transistor is turned on, and that is the transistor which is under consideration. So one thing it's proved that it's on, it's not in cutoff, it's on. So now what we need to identify is it's either in the linear region or in the saturation region. So for that, let's write the condition which differentiates the linear and the saturation region. VDS dash VGS minus VTN. VDS is nothing but V out. VGS is nothing but V in. And we know that V out is nothing but VOH at this condition. It's mentioned here, right? Which is VDD. So VDD would always be greater than something. Even if this is VDD, threshold voltage would be subtracted minus from that, so this is going to be a greater than sign, so it's going to be in saturation. So when my output is nearly equal to VDD, my transistor is in saturation. But we all know that the input has moved towards VOH and output is going down. So now output is going down, going down, going down, going down. So we need to understand till what point of time my transistor is going to be in the saturation region for. So that is what we are concerned with. Now we know that in this case, first case is clear that my transistor in saturation. In case two, we know that my input has gone to VOH and my output has started going down. So when would this come out of saturation and enter linear region? Very simple. When VDS is less than VGS minus VTN. And we know that VDS is nothing but V out. So we can say V out less than VGS is nothing but V in, which in this case is nothing but VOH, VOH minus VTN. So if my output is less than VOH minus VTN, my transistor enters linear region. This is exactly how T1 dash came in the picture that I've written it as nothing but VOH minus VTN. So here, things which are marked in red is the point of time when my transistor is operating in saturation. And things with a mark with pink is a point of time when my transistor is operating in the linear region and we just proved that. So now I know that between T0 to T1 dash, my transistor is operating in saturation. So I'll write the equation of current in saturation region. And between T1 dash and T1, my transistor is operating in linear. So I'll write the equation of transistor in linear region. And once I have both that equations, I'll put it here in equation number two and with integration simplify and finally find the propagation delay high to low. So let's start doing that. The challenging part here was to just understand the region of operation of our transistors. So let's quickly go ahead and do the derivation. So let's take case one here. Case one is between my time interval T0 to T1 dash. In that case, we have already seen that my transistor is in saturation and my output voltage was between VOH minus VTN to VDD. So that is what exactly I've written. My output voltage was greater than VOH minus VTN, but less than or equal to VOH, VOH 
is nothing but VDD or could be equal to VDD. That's exactly what we have just said. And we are currently focusing on this particular area to identify the time delay or the propagation delay. Now we have found out the general formula of the capacitor. The method, the method which we are going to follow is we are going to substitute the value of current in this equation and we are going to integrate initial time, final time, initial voltage, final voltage and put the value of current and see what happens. So let's quickly do this. So we know that the equation of ID in saturation region is nothing but Kn by 2 V in minus Vtn the whole square. V in is nothing but Vgs, correct? In this case, we just saw that when my output was just beginning to fall, my input was VOH. So I can put VI in or V in equal to VOH. This is nothing but V in equal to VOH, which reduces this expression to Kn by 2 VOH minus Vtn the whole square. Now let's put this in this general equation. We are interested in time from t equal to 0 to time equal to t1 dash, correct, minus Cl. Output was initially VOH. Output was going up till, so it was VOH and it will be in saturation till VOH minus Vtn. And this is nothing but dv out and let's put the equation of id here so id i'm going to take two up correct kn voh minus vt of n mos the whole square don't get confused this is the equation which i've just put it so now we will have to integrate this and after integration what we'll get is nothing but the following t1 dash minus t0 equal to twice Cl Vtn upon Kn VOH minus Vtn the whole square. So I got expression for this. Now I'm going to focus on T1 dash and T1 in the similar way where I know that in this case my transistor is going to operate in the linear region. So let's quickly go ahead and do that. So here is case 2 where we have just seen that like case 1, we are concerned with the time interval between T1 dash to T1. We have seen that the transistor is operating in the linear region and my V out will be less than VOH minus VTN, which I have already shown you in the graph here. When your V out goes lower than VOH minus VTN, it will be in linear. And we are going to be concerned till V50 only because our definition is still here. So in this range between V50% to VOH minus VTN, when my transistor is operating in linear, is the region which I am concerned with for integration. So let's quickly go ahead and do that. Let's write the equation of ID in the linear region. IDN is equal to KN by 2. That's correct. Twice VN. VN is nothing but VGS minus VTN into V out. V out is nothing but VDS minus V out square. And in this case, we know that input again is nothing but, if you look at it properly, my input is nothing but VOH. So let's substitute that. Twice VOH minus VTN into V out minus V out square. Now we are going to do the integration and put it in the general formula. So we have already seen that. So the initial time is T1 dash. The final time is T1 minus CL. The equation of ID which I'm going to put it with the pink color here. But now what's going to happen is here the equation ID is a function of the output voltage. So it also needs to be integrated. Correct? Everyone agrees to that. So initial voltage where we are going to integrate is VOH minus VTN and we'll go up till V50% which will be the final. Look here. We start on this point and we go up till this point to find T1 dash to T1. That's exactly what I've done. And now I will put the value. 1 upon Kn twice VOH minus VTN into V out minus V out square. This whole thing is into dV out. This is the general formula which again we saw here on the screen. This is exactly, I've just put ID. I've done the integration initial voltages and the final voltages, initial time and the final time. And I have put it. Now 
after integrating what we are going to get is the following let's quickly write after integration so t1 minus t1 dash is equal to minus twice cl upon kn 1 upon twice voh minus vtn ln is log of voh i beg your pardon v out upon twice voh minus vtn minus v out this is also we need to substitute the value of v out which is nothing but v out equal to voh minus vtn and v out equal to v50 percent let's put this finally quickly so finally i get my term as t1 minus t1 dash is equal to c load upon kn voh minus vtn logarithmic twice voh minus vtn minus v50 percent upon v50 percent this is what i will get now remember we have already seen that v50 percent is nothing but voh plus vol by 2 just remember this let's call this as equation x and let's call this as equation y so i'm going to add equation x and y or i'm going to combine both of them to find the total propagation delay and that is nothing but i'm writing x here just for reference so that no one gets confused t1 dash minus t0 equal to twice c load into v i beg your pardon into vtn upon kn voh minus vtn the whole square so i have written equation y and x here and i am going to find the total propagation delay by combining this two so tphl is equal to c load upon kn voh minus vtn this entire thing into bracket i have taken this common from both the terms twice vtn what i have taken common is this term and this term with one pending one voh minus vtn pending same i took it common from here as well so twice vtn upon voh minus vtn as it was a square term only one had been taken in common plus logarithmic and this entire thing will come and now i'm going to use put here v50 percent as this value and it's straight away going to simplify ln of 4 voh minus vtn upon voh plus vol so v50 percent i put as voh plus vol by 2 so 2 goes up and becomes 4 and voh plus vol minus v50 percent upon v50 percent is going to be 1 so minus 1 and if we presume that our voh would be vdd which we ideally want and vol to be 0 then my final propagation delay high to low is given by c load kn vdd minus vtn into bracket twice vtn upon vdd minus vtn plus ln four times vdd minus vtn upon vdd minus one and this is propagation delay high to low it is not at all confusing similarly you can find low to high as well what we need to keep in mind is how to identify the region of operation once the region of operation is identified we have the value of id we need to put i equal to cdv by dt integrate time initial voltage final voltage integrate integrate time final time initial time integrate voltage final voltage initial voltage and just do some mathematics and with that you will find the value of the propagation delay hope you have followed stay tuned for further clips and thank you very much